Hey, what's up everyone? Today, we're gonna talk about what happened to the 2007 Kansas Jayhawks football team and how they went from one of the worst teams in the nation to the brink of a national championship. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps me out a lot. Before the 2007 season, the Kansas Jayhawks football team only had 26 winning seasons in their entire 106 year history. They had a 94 win to 126 loss record in the previous 20 years and a 32 win and 50 loss record in the previous 7 years. They have a long history of not having good teams, and their best seasons ever were 1995 and 1905 with 10 wins. Enter Mark Mangino in 2002. He took over for the Kansas Jayhawks and when he arrived, he said that their facilities were terrible and that Texas high school football teams had better facilities. He began his mission to turn around one of the most historic losing teams in college football history. He said he didn't care about their incredible basketball team and all the attention they got, he was just focused on mentoring and improving his players for the football team. Mangino served as an assistant coach for Jim Tressel in 1987, who was an amazing coach and he learned a lot from him. He even coached at Kansas State for 8 years before going to the University of Oklahoma, helping them win the 2000 National Championship as their offensive coordinator. He even won the National Coach of the Year award, so Mangino not only brought a winning mindset but a lot of experience and Mangino was a fiery, angry coach who had a ton of passion. In his first season with the Jayhawks, they posted a 2-10 record and were blown out in some of their games. However, in his second season, the Jayhawks improved to a 6-7 record with a bowl game appearance that they lost. Over the next three years, he and the Jayhawks posted a record of 17-18, and 18, so they weren't quite at 500, but they were very competitive, albeit an average team. He did take them to a bowl game victory in 2005. Now, all of this leads us into the 2007 season. The Jayhawks were coming off a 6-6 six six season from the previous year, and although he was making the program competitive, they were still very average. However, in his 6th season, the program was finally what he wanted. He had his recruits, his coaches, his guys. Going into the 2007 season, expectations were not very high, but he would leave an unlikely crew to a historic offensive season, averaging 44 points and 491 yards per game. This was good enough to be the second best offensive team in the entire nation. Now this leads us to our unlikely star trio of quarterback Todd Reesing, running back Brandon McAnderson, and wide receiver Marcus Henry. The previous season in 2006, these three players had just 642 yards combined together. In 2007, they would have an insane 5,625 yards combined. Yeah. They came out of nowhere and opened their season with four straight games at home against some not so great competition in Central Michigan, Southeastern Louisiana, Toledo, and FIU. However, they were shocking everyone in the nation as they destroyed their opponents, outscoring them 214 to 23. Yes, the average score was 53 to 6 in those games. Now, despite this hot start, they were still not ranked, but at 4-0 with their team playing lights out, they headed on to their rival on the road at Kansas State. This was their first road game and the first real test of the season as they went into Kansas State and upset the 24th ranked Wildcats, 30-24 in a very close game. This led to Kansas being ranked number 20th in the nation at 5-0 as people were finally starting to take them seriously. The following week, they would annihilate Baylor 58-10 at home before heading into Colorado. This is a game where the offense was actually shut down almost completely. But the defense stepped up and they hung on to win 19-14. This leads them to 6-0, so they had a scare, but they're still undefeated. The following week, they would travel to College Station to face the Texas A&M Aggies. They came into the game ranked 9th in the BCS rankings. Now the Jayhawks dominated for most of the game and won 19-11 after the Aggies made a late game run of it. This led to their first 8-0 record since the 1909 season. They went on to win their next three games, outscoring opponents 161-84. Now this leads Kansas ranked number 2 in the nation to play Missouri for the Big 12 North Division title. 
whoever would win this game would go to the Big 12 Championship and face the Oklahoma Sooners. Oh, and right, Missouri? They were also having their best season in school history. It wasn't just Kansas. Missouri was having their best season ever, and this was a chance for both schools to get their first national championship in school history. Number one team in the nation, LSU, had just lost, so the number one ranking in the nation was on the line in this game. Two historic offenses, two unlikely stories, and two unbelievable teams that were playing out of their minds, playing at Arrowhead Stadium for the North title in the Big 12. But it was a disappointing game for the Jayhawks, as the Jayhawks would fall behind 14-0 at halftime and 28-7 in the third quarter to chase Daniel in the historic Missouri offense. Unfortunately, Kansas's amazing offense had a terrible start and star quarterback Todd Reesing threw two interceptions that directly led to Missouri touchdown drives. Now, Kansas did make a comeback, pulling within 34 to 28, but with just 12 seconds left in the game, Reese was sacked for a safety, ending the game and ending their national championship hopes. This loss was huge because it kept them out of the Big 12 championship game, which if they had won that against the Oklahoma Sooners, they could have raised themselves back up in the rankings for a possible national championship bid. However, Missouri's own historic season ruined theirs. This was obviously devastating, and the biggest game in school history ended with an L. After this, Kansas fell to number 8 in the rankings. However, they still received an invite to face number 5 Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl. Now, Missouri actually ended up losing to the Oklahoma Sooners, and many people thought they or Oklahoma should have been in the Orange Bowl versus Virginia Tech. This caused a lot of controversy, but at the end of the day, the Jayhawks got the invite. Now, Kansas dominated early, going up 17 to nothing in the first half. The Jayhawk defense definitely showed up in this game as they went on to have three interceptions, including a pick six for MVP of the game, Akib Talib. Now, they ended up hanging on and winning this game 24 to 21. This wrapped up their best season in school history as they finished seventh overall in the final college football rankings. This was truly one of the coolest and most random seasons in college football history. There were so many ranked teams that lost this year, and it was just wide open, and it seemed like the perfect Cinderella story for a team like Kansas to make it to the national championship and win it. Both Kansas and Missouri had a chance to win their first national championships, but in their biggest game, they both choked and lost. There were a lot of critics who said that Kansas had a weak schedule and that that was the only reason they got all the way up to rank number two in the nation, but they were still so close to getting to a national championship game and they were still winning their games and in a lot of them, they were dominating. Kansas really did have a special group that year. So with this historic year, turn the Kansas Jayhawks program around for good and send them into a new era where they would be competitive in a winning football team? Well, the following season, they did go 8-5 and five and had another winning season, but in 2009, they finished with a losing record of 5-7. and seven. Now, top this off with the biggest nail in the coffin, which was when they came to terms with coach Mark Mangino for his resignation. Although he was a great coach and everyone in Kansas seemingly loved him, apparently there were many at Kansas that complained about him being too physical and even too verbally abusive to his players. Some players were threatening transferring because they thought that he was too disrespectful and he didn't understand them. He would even yell at staff at Kansas University as he wasn't paying parking tickets and he would yell at employees trying to talk to him. This, combined with the dropping performance of the team, led to his resignation. So, what happened after this? Since Mangino left, Kansas has a record of just 21 wins and an insane 99 losses. So was letting Mangino go the biggest mistake ever for the school? Maybe. As of right now, legendary coach Les Miles is trying to turn around the program. He was just 3-9 in his first season last year in 2019, but we will see what he can do over the next couple of years. Thanks so much for watching everyone. This is one of my favorite storylines and teams I've ever watched over the last 20 years, and I always love a good underdog story. That's what sports is all about, right? Let me know what you think about that season and what you think about the Jayhawks since that season. What's gonna happen to them? Will they ever have a year like that ever again? Guys, make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my future videos. As always guys, I'll see you in the next one.